Okay, so uh, today's Eighth Week Friday. We're going to uh, wrap up uh, Chapter 8, or uh, at least uh, cover some a little bit more on hypothesis testing for categorical variables. And then... Um, and the next week is ninth week, and the week after that is tenth week, and then uh, and then we have finals. So let me just kind of just give a quick uh, quick glance at uh, kind of the rest of the the remaining weeks. Okay, so uh, week nine we will cover uh, chapter nine. Okay, and then week ten will be uh, mostly spent in uh, kind of review and then and finer points of statistical inference okay okay and uh, and then after that the final exam students always ask is your final exam Cumulative, and my answer is about 80% will be uh, on basically chapters 7, 8, and 9. Okay, and then about 20%, you know, chapters 1 through 6. And this is mostly conceptual. Okay, so. As far as, yeah, chapters one through six stuff goes, I'm not going to be asking very many um, calculation-based problems, but uh, more conceptual ones from, uh, from before, okay? Um, okay, so, uh, so let's wrap up, uh, or let's cover the, uh, the last section in, uh, in chapter eight, okay? Um, well, I guess uh, maybe before we uh, before we do, let's um, let's try out a, a quick clicker question uh, based on type one and type two error. Okay, I'm just looking around. It looks like we're missing some people. Um, I, I just ask. I ask that you just click your own clicker, okay? You know, if, uh, if a friend gave you their clicker and said, please click for me, you know, per personal request, personal favor, just click your own, please, okay? Okay, so type one versus type two error. All right, so let's say, uh, let's say you perform a hypothesis test to see if the proportion of people who, uh, I don't know, own a cat is over 30%, okay? So we're gonna ask, Let's say you perform a hypothesis test to see if the proportion of people who own a cat is over 30%. So in your, in your mind, you should be start, starting to think of what your hypotheses should be. Okay, so try to think of your hypotheses. Okay, um, let's say that based on your data, You, uh, you say you do not have evidence that the proportion is over 30%, okay? But the truth is that the proportion of cat owners is actually 34%. Okay, so is this 
And this is your question. Okay, A will be type 1 error. B is type 2 error. And C is correct conclusion. Okay, so let me out. Let's get this fired up. So you, you can discuss with your neighbors what, what this would be. Okay, so go ahead and, uh, and start clicking. Okay. So again, uh, when you read this, think of what your hypotheses should be. Okay, uh, just a few more seconds to get your clicks in. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and click stop here. Okay, so let's take a look. It says uh, you're performing a hypothesis test to see if the proportion of people who own a cat is over 30%. So what should our null hypothesis be? P is equal to 0.3, right? The null hypothesis always has an equal sign, and then the number that we're proposing is 30%. So our null hypothesis will be P equal to 0.3. And then the alternative will be P is greater than 0.3, okay? So what we have, it says, let's say that based on your data, you say you do not have evidence that the proportion is over 30%. So what was our conclusion? So right here, uh, you do not have evidence. So that will be our conclusion. Did we choose to reject or not reject the null hypothesis? We chose uh, do not reject. the null hypothesis. So far, so good? Okay. The truth is that the proportion is actually 34%. Okay. So the truth is, is that the proportion is, is 34%, which is greater than 0.3. Okay. So the truth is basically HA is correct. The alternative is correct. Okay. So we chose not to reject, but we should have rejected, okay? So that, that would be a, a false negative, okay? We chose not to reject the null, but the alternative actually is correct, that the null is wrong, so this would be a type 2 error, okay? Let's, uh, let's see how you guys did, okay? So it was kind of split here. This type 1, type 2 error, it is, you know, as for concepts go, it's, it's probably a little bit one of the trickier concepts to, uh, to get a hold of, okay? Because they do sound similar, but, um, but they are different, okay? Do we have questions on this, or do we, uh, do we need more clarification, or? Okay. Well, I, I would encourage you to kind of just uh, study some of these examples. We'll, we will also cover... Uh, type 1 and type 2 error, I guess, again in uh, week 10 when we review all of our statistical inference and, uh, and all of that stuff, okay? So, so we'll cover, uh, we'll wrap up chapter 8 today, next week will be chapter 9, and then we will cover this stuff uh, in greater detail in chap uh, week 10. Okay.
So, so far, we have covered hypothesis tests for uh, testing if the proportion of one population is equal to, uh, to a particular value, okay? So, so far, you have learned the hypothesis test Uh, and it's, I'm going to just kind of write this for uh, categorical variables. With one sample, okay? And so here, uh, uh, I'm going to write the null hypothesis is P is equal to some value P0, okay? So you're testing to see if the proportion you have is equal to some value. That's your null hypothesis, okay? So, uh, so now we will learn um, a hypothesis test for categorical variables with two samples. Okay. All right. And so in this case, basically sample one comes from population one. So I can, I guess I could just draw pictures. Okay. So I got population one, some large entity. And we have population two, another large entity. Okay. And from population two, we draw sample two. And from population one, we draw sample one. Okay? Sample one has uh, N1, X1, which produce us P hat one. Sample two will have N2, X2, and p hat 2, okay? And the question is, is that if p hat 1 and p hat 2 are different, does that mean that their respective populations, which overall have proportion 1, p1, and p2, does that mean the respective populations have different proportions, okay? So if our, if our samples have different proportions, basically P1 hat is different from P2 hat, or P hat 2, um, does that mean the populations have different proportions, meaning P1 is also different from P2. Okay, that's, uh, that's the, uh, the question there. And so, um, Uh, or the other possibility is the pro populations have the same proportion that P1 and P2 are equal and it's just random chance that produced samples with different proportions, okay? Or the populations have the same proportion Our samples ended up this way from random chance alone. Okay, our samples ended up with different p hats because of random chance. Okay. 
So, uh, so let's try this out. We'll uh, we'll try an example, and uh, and I'll kind of walk you through the uh, the same process. So, uh, as far as hypothesis testing goes, the uh, the same kind of four step procedure applies here. Okay, it's just uh, a few of the formulas have changed. Okay, so I guess maybe I'll do the uh, the overview of the steps, and then we'll do a, an example here. Okay, so if you remember before, step one was create your hypotheses. These are, this is, okay. So step one will be the hypotheses. And so here, our null hypothesis is always going to be P1 is equal to P2. In other words, the two populations have the same proportion. So this is, this is always going to be our null hypothesis. Uh, it can, can also be written, and this is uh, ex saying the exact same thing, but some textbooks uh, write them this way. The null hypothesis can also be written that P1 minus P2 is equal to 0. Okay? And I, I think we can see that these two things say the exact same thing, right? We're basically saying 3 is equal to 3, or 3 minus 3 is 0. It's, it's the same, OK? Uh, the alternative, the alternative uh, is identical to the null hypothesis. So we will accept that the equal sign has been replaced with something else. So we have P1 is not equal to P2, which can also be written as um, P1 minus P2 is not equal to 0. Or we can have uh, P1 is greater than P2, or uh, P1 is less than P2. Okay, so so these would be all uh, appropriate uh, hypotheses for here. Okay. Step two, uh, same as before, check your conditions. This is our preparation step. So. Uh, Check conditions, okay, and determine what alpha you will use. All right. Okay, and then uh, step three, let's see. I think I'm going to flip to the next slide for step three. I could use this space. So step three will be uh, do your calculations to get your p-value, right? OK. And so before we had 3a, which was find your standard error, there's, here there's going to be kind of a 3a part one and a 3a part two, OK? So 3a part one is determine the overall p hat. Okay. So recall that our samples, we had two samples. Sample 1 has p hat 1 and sample 2 has p hat 2. Here we're going to have an overall p hat, okay? And so the overall p hat is basically you're going to take the total number of successes x1 and x2 and you're going to divide that by your total number of observations, n1 plus n2. And this is kind of your overall proportion of whatever it is that you're looking at. Okay? So you have an overall p hat. Okay. And then once you figure that out, then you can figure out your uh, standard error. Okay. And the standard error here is just this ugly formula that we can't really do anything about. It's going to be p hat, the overall p hat, times 1 minus p hat, times 1 over n1 plus 1 over n2 
quantity, okay? So, so that's going to be your standard error, okay? So, um, as, as far as the steps go, the steps are the same, it's just the formulas have changed a little bit, okay? All right, uh, what's the next thing that we would do in the other test? We would get our test statistic, right? The test statistic. And we said the test statistic is kind of the difference between the reality and the expectation, or the difference between the observed and the expected, divided by your standard error, right? Observed minus expected, divided by our standard error. Okay. All right, and so if we uh, let's take a look at one of our null hypotheses. Okay, so our null hypothesis was that uh, we can write it as p1 minus p2 is equal to zero. Right. So this is what the uh, the null hypothesis says. Okay. So under this x um, under here, our observed value, our observed difference, would be p hat one minus p hat two. This is what we observe. This is the reality from our, our data. And what would be the expected difference be? The expected would be 0. Is that OK? And so basically, I'm going to just plug this into here, observed minus expected. And so my observed becomes p hat 1 minus p hat 2 uh, minus 0 for expected. But minus 0 really doesn't do anything. so. I could just leave it off. I could, I could put in minus 0 if it makes you feel better, but, um, but I, I really don't need to put that there, right? So I can do p hat 1 minus p hat 2 minus 0 divided by the standard error, but it seems kind of silly to write minus 0, so I'm going to just erase it. And so our test statistic just ends up being p hat 1 minus p hat 2 divided by the standard error, and this is our test statistic z. Uh, let this. I hope this feels okay with everybody. All right, and then uh, and then so once we have our test statistic, what do we do? We're going to uh, look up the test statistic in the z table or in the uh, test statistic in the z table to get our p value. Okay, and the, and the rules here are exactly the same as before. It all depends on how the alternative is written. So if al alternative has a greater than sign, the p-value equals area to the right of z. If the alternative has a less than sign, then the p-value is the area to the left of z. And if the alternative has a not equal sign, then the p-value is equal to 2 times the tail area. OK. So I'm hoping uh, the introduction of this is not feeling too crazy compared to what we've seen before, right? So if we feel like we have you know, somewhat of a handle on hypothesis testing when we have one sample, uh, it's not a crazy leap to get to two samples, OK? The only, I would say the biggest difference is the calculation of the standard error, which involves determining your overall p hat and then using this uh, uglier formula, OK? But, uh, but you know, once. But you know we have calculators, so it's it's just punching stuff into the calculator. It's not too bad. Okay. Okay, and then um, and then after that, uh, step four is uh, make your conclusion. And we said uh, if your p-value is less than alpha, what do we do? We reject the null hypothesis. And if our p-value is greater than alpha, 
do not reject the null hypothesis. Yes, question. Did you mention case for when p-value equals alpha? When p-value equals alpha. Uh, that rarely happens. Um, I guess the, uh, if it were to happen, which, which would be only in extreme, extremely rare circumstances, uh, I would say don't reject the null. But, uh, but other people might say reject the null. Okay? It's, just, it's kind of a, it's like up to you, really. <laughs> um, because alpha, again, is just kind of this arbitrary line where we said if it ends up smaller than this, we're going to say our p-value is small. Okay? And then so if your p-value ends up equal to that line that you drew, then you have to make a kind of a judgment call yourself. So I don't know. It almost never happens in real life. Okay? It could. It could. But it, it, it almost never happens. Okay. So uh, we'll do an example here. And uh, oh, what's that? Yeah. So determining which alpha to use, we'll say uh, the significance level is your alpha. It's either going to be mentioned in the problem. It'll say use a significance level of 10% or use a significance level of 5%. And if the problem doesn't mention a significance level, assume that it's 5%. Okay. Assume that it's 5%. Okay. Okay. So let's. Uh, we'll do an example. I'm going to do. Um, just a silly example that plays on stereotypes of Americans here, OK? <laughs> I hope, I don't think anyone's going to be offended by this. But uh, all right, so we'll, we'll say, um, are people in Texas uh, more likely to own a truck than Californians, OK? Okay, so I don't, I don't know if this, I hope this is a, this is fine, uh, just a silly example that plays on what we imagine California to be and what we imagine Texas to be, right? Okay. Texas is a great place, by the way, okay? <laughs> Lovely people in Texas. <laughs> Lovely people in California. You know, wherever you go, there's going to be nice people and there's going to be jerks, so. Um, <laughs> That's, that's going to be uh, everywhere, OK? Um, all right, so people, are people in Texas more likely to own a truck than people in California? OK, so we're going to just, uh, so this is our question, OK? So how should we formulate our hypotheses, OK? So we will say um, we can call sample one those from Texas, and we'll call sample two and population two those from California, OK? OK, and then so I'll, I'll put in the data here, n1 and x1 and n2 and x2, OK? But how should we do our hypotheses then, OK? So if, if sample one and population one is Texas, we can write our null and our alternative hypothesis, OK? So we'll say, you know, P1 will be proportion of Texas that owns a truck. And then P2 would be the proportion from California that owns a truck, right? OK, so our null hypothesis would be that P1, what, is equal to P2. Or we could also write um, P1 minus P2 equal to 0. That's also fine. P1 minus P2 equal to 0. So either way you write the null hypothesis, it's fine. Okay? And then the alternative, the question is asking, are people in Texas more likely to own a truck than people in California? And so we would say the alternative should be P1 is greater than P2. Okay, so this is uh, these are the hypotheses that we're going to write. Okay, all right, and so um, step two is to check our conditions.
basically we just want to make sure we're, we don't have too big of a sample, um, we don't have too small of a sample, so we need at least 10 successes and 10 failures uh, for Texas, 10 successes, 10 failures in California, and then um, and they need to be random samples. Okay, I'm going to just make up numbers here, all right? Uh, and then so we'll say we surveyed uh, 110 people in Texas and 55 own a truck. Again, making stuff up here. And in California, we'll say 100, we surveyed 105 people and uh, 30 people owned a truck or something like that, okay? And so we'll say, um, so if we check our conditions, our conditions are met. Okay, and then we'll say use alpha equal to 0.05, okay? Okay, so, so here let's just kind of take a look at our data, okay? So we have p hat 1 equal to 55 divided by 110. We have p hat 1 equal to 0.5. So if I do 55 divided by 110, I get 0.5. So it's, you know, from our sample, 50% of people in Texas own a truck, okay? And in California, if we do 30 divided by 105, I get 0.286, okay? So p hat 2 is 0.286, okay? Now let me uh, back up. 30 divided by 105, 0.286, okay? And so the question now is, okay, our samples ended up with different proportions of people owning trucks. Could our results in our sample just be a result of random chance, meaning that California and Texas actually have the same percentage of truck owners and because I took a random sample, they ended up this way? Or is this a reflection that in Texas, you got more truck owners and in California, you have fewer truck owners? This is, this is the question. Could this be a result of random chance or is this an indication that the populations are actually different, okay? So, um, so to test this out, we will do uh, our hypothesis test. Uh, uh, I mean, do our calculations here, okay? So we are doing our hypothesis test right now. Okay, so step three, we're gonna get our overall p hat. I suppose I should do some uh, clicker questions here. Okay, um, I, I don't even know. Uh, then I have to like make up fake answers here. Okay, uh, it's too hard. <laughs> we'll just, we'll just, we'll do the work. Okay, so what do we, what do we plug in for p hat? P hat is our overall proportion, right? This is the overall proportion of people who own trucks in both of our samples, okay? So I'm gonna have x1 plus x2 divided by n1 plus n2. So in the numerator, I have a total of 55 plus 30, a total of 85 people owning trucks. And then how many people did I survey total? 110 plus 105, I surveyed a total of 215 people. Okay, so I got 85 divided by 215. I'm typing this in the wrong spot. 85 divided by 215. So my overall proportion of truck owners is like 0.3953. So don't, um, it, it will come out similar if you were to average these two, but don't, don't just do 0 0.5 plus 0 0.286 divided by two. Don't average p hat one and p hat two. It, it depends on the sample size. So you have to do the total number of, quote, successes divided by the total number of observations, okay? So this is step three, uh, you know, 3A part one. Okay, 3A part two is getting our standard error. So we're gonna plug this value into our equation p hat times one minus p hat divided by one over n1 plus one over n2. So I'm gonna just plug in 0.3953 times one minus 0.3953 times one over n1 is 110 plus one over n2 which is 105. Okay. All right, and so when I do this on the calculator, uh, if you have a calculator like this, 
you know, I have 0.3953 in my screen already. I'm just gonna hit answer times parentheses one minus the answer. So instead of having to type out the whole uh, thing, I'm gonna just hit answer and it actually preserves all of these decimals, which is nice, okay? And then I'm gonna do times parentheses one over 110 plus one over 105. Close parentheses, okay? And then I will take the square root of that number and I get 0 0.06671. Okay, 0 0.06671, or, so that's my standard error, okay? So I get a standard error of about 6.7%. 6, 6 okay, so step uh, my 3A part, or 3, what is this? Oh, this is, I forget, 3B, okay. Our test statistic Z is the observed difference, so that's p hat 1 minus p hat 2, technically minus 0, but we don't have to list that off. So the observed difference I got is 0.5 minus 0.286. I'm going to divide this by my standard error of 0 0.06671. Okay, so let's try this out. Parentheses, 0.5 minus... Uh, I'll, I guess I'll preserve 30 divided by uh, 105, and I'm going to divide this by my answer, okay? So I get um, a z-score of 3.21, okay? So I'm about 3.21 standard deviations away from the mean, okay? My difference here. Okay, so far so good? All right, so uh, you know when we see a z-score like this, what does this tell us? It tells us that um, that we're pretty far away from what we would expect, right? The reality, uh, where we're getting you know pretty much like a 21, 22 percentage point difference between truck owners in Texas and California, that is pretty far away from uh, our expectation of zero. Okay, because if if, uh, if Texas and California truly had the same proportion of truck owners, well, uh, we would expect our random samples to produce um, differences of zero. Here we're getting a 22 percentage point difference or 21 percentage point difference. That's um, pretty far away from zero according to this. So uh, in our last step, we would look this up. So look up Z equal to 3.21 to get our p-value. Okay, and so uh, the alternative has a greater than sign, so we want the area to the right. Okay, so we are expecting a difference of zero. What we ended up getting was basically, um, you know, our observed difference, which is has a z-score of 3.21. How much is gonna be shaded over here? Well, we'll uh, look this up in our z-table. Where did it go? Reference tables. And, uh, okay, so looking up 3.21, I'm at 0.9993, okay? Whoops. Something happened. Okay. So, uh, so this area is 0 0.9993, which means this area over here is going to be 0 0.0007. So my p-value is equal to 0 0.0007. Uh, and that's our p-value. Okay, so then our conclusion. As far as our conclusion goes, let's say we used alpha equal to 5%, we would say our p-value is less than alpha, okay? So this means, um, you know, the small p-value tells us that our data is uh, unlikely to happen 
from random chance alone. Okay, so therefore, we reject the null hypothesis. We come to the conclusion that the uh, proportion of truck owners is higher in Texas than in California. All right, is that good? OK. Maybe I'll just throw in one. Uh, I'll just give everybody a free clicker. Everybody just click A on your clicker. <laughs> All right, so click A, everybody. Go, go, go. OK. All right, OK, and then, uh, and then that'll be it. So just click A on your clicker before you get out of here. And then have a great weekend. We'll see you guys uh, next week, OK?